Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking about the inguinal canal. Inguinal canal could be an expected uh, essay question or it can be asked in case of a short note. So I would like to explain you this inguinal canal like how, how to be written in the examinations and how many side headings and all this I will be explaining only with the help of diagrams so that it could be easier for you to study and also remember during your examinations. So let us get into the video. Now inguinal canal is an oblique intramuscular passage which is located in the lower part of anterior abdominal wall and it is located above the inguinal ligament its medial half is present parallel to the inguinal ligament see if you see this is the inguinal canal which is obliquely present uh, how could you tell the direction is uh, it is directed downward forward and uh, medially downward forward and medially it is extended between the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring this deep inguinal ring is also called the internal inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring is also called the external inguinal ring so firstly this is all about the intro if you write this this is more than enough and now coming to the length of this is four centimeters or easily equal to 1.5 5 inches and this uh, deep inguinal ring I have told you this the medial part is present parallelly but this deep inguinal ring is present 1.2 centimeters above the mid inguinal point above the mid inguinal point now the second side heading what you have to put is inguinal rings firstly explain what are inguinal rings now deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring is a oval shaped opening present in the fascia transversalis fascia transversalis and this is situated 1.2 centimeters above the uh, mid inguinal point i have already told you about the mid inguinal i'm sorry just try to adjust so about the 1.2 centimeters above the mid inguinal point we can see this deep inguinal ring now coming to the superficial inguinal ring the superficial inguinal ring is a triangular uh, gap it is press it's a triangular gap seen in the external oblique aponeurosis external oblique aponeurosis this triangular is not a normal triangle like it's not an equilateral triangle like that it is an obtuse triangle it is an obtuse triangle what is obtuse so when you see at obtuse triangle two angles will be less than 90 degrees and the third angle will be greater than 90 but less than 180 this is an obtuse angle this superficial inguinal ring is an obtuse triangle is an obtuse triangle let us see this uh, superficial inguinal ring in detail see this is the superficial inguinal ring i have told you it will be having a triangular shape see there's a triangular shape and this a triangular shape now this is the base uh, this is the base and these are the sides right now uh, this base is formed by the pubic tubercle the base is formed by a uh, pubic uh, and yeah it is formed uh, by the pubic tubercle it is 1.2 centimeters broad and the length is length of this triangle is 2.5 centimeters in length so i told you these are the uh, lateral a uh, lateral side and the medial side this lateral margin and medial margin they are formed by the crura they are formed by the lateral crura and the medial crura these both crura they meet uh, at the apex they meet at the apex and are joined by means of the intercrural fibers they are joined by the intercrural fibers what is the actual function of this uh, intercrural fibers is they prevent the excess of widening of this um, a superficial inguinal ring excess widening of the superficial inguinal ring is prevented by this 
super i mean uh, intercrural fibers this is all about the inguinal rings the superficial and the deep one is oval shaped and other is a triangular shape this is all you have to write if you just draw this diagram and explain in terms of diagram it will be more easier for you and also for the examiner now coming to the boundaries the second uh, uh, i'm sorry third uh, side heading you have to give is boundaries i would like to explain you this also in terms of the uh, a simple diagram see um, this uh, will be having anterior boundary a posterior boundary and a roof and a uh, what do you say the floor and a floor see uh, firstly let us uh, talk about the anterior boundary anterior boundary will be formed from superficial to deep if you go it is formed by skin superficial fascia and uh, it is formed by the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle so these three they constitute the whole extent in the anterior wall so anterior wall is formed by the complete the whole extent of the skin superficial fascia and the external oblique aponeurosis and the lateral one third lateral one third will be formed a lateral one third of the internal oblique muscle lateral one third internal oblique muscle this will be also forming the anterior boundary now uh, let us see completely the anterior boundary is formed by complete extent of skin superficial fascia and upon neurosis of the external oblique muscle and the lateral one third of the internal oblique muscle so this is the anterior boundary now coming to the posterior boundary coming to the posterior boundary uh, from uh, uh, deep to the superficial uh, this is the fascia transversalis we know this is a deep inguinal ring and oval shaped opening present in the fascia transversalis and above this fascia transversalis we find the extra peritoneal tissue extra peritoneal tissue and above which we find the parietal peritoneum and uh, this three completely uh, this three completely constitute the posterior boundary just like the anterior boundary there is something constituting only up to some extent that is nothing but uh, that is nothing but the conjoint tendon and the uh, reflected part of the reflected part of the inguinal ligament so this will be constituting only medial two thirds medial their medial two-thirds in the uh, formation of the posterior boundary so the posterior boundary is formed by the complete extent of uh, fascia transversalis extra peritoneal tissue and parietal peritoneum and the medial two-thirds of uh, conjoint tendon and the reflected part of the inguinal ligament inguinal ligament and now uh, coming to the uh, you can't explain the root and the uh, i mean roof and the floor so i would like to tell you in just a uh, normal words the roof is formed by the arched fibers of the internal oblique muscle arched arched fibers of internal oblique muscle and the floor is formed by the grooved upper surface of the inguinal ligament when you study about the inguinal ligament we will learn about that uh, we will learn about that uh, it will be having two surfaces the grooved upper surface and rounded lower surface so like this you can see from the side so this is a grooved upper surface and the rounded lower surface this grooved upper portion of the inguinal ligament will be forming the floor of the inguinal canal so the roof is formed by the arched fibers of uh, internal oblique muscle and uh, sometimes it's transverse abdominus muscle also and the floor is formed by the grooved surface of the inguinal ligament these are about the boundaries of the inguinal ligament i'm sorry inguinal canal now uh, the contents okay let me tell you the contents first uh, yeah contents vary in male and female i'm sorry female and male in males this include the uh, spermatic cord 
plus the ilioinguinal nerve and this in females it includes the round ligament of uterus plus ilioinguinal nerve ilioinguinal nerve is common in male spermatic cord in female the round ligament of the uterus now let us see what is this uh, spermatic cord and uh, what are the contents present in it so the spermatic cord is nothing but the collection of the structures that passes to and fro from the testis this is called the uh, spermatic cord now let us see what else are present in the spermatic cord uh, i will we will be just we'll just learn it very simply first uh, let us complete arteries okay arteries uh, this is the artery to the ductus arti uh, ductus deferens artery to the artery to the ductus deferens and um, this is the testicular artery this is the testicular artery and this is the cremastric vessels cremastric artery or you find the cremastric vessels these three constitute the arteries and uh, secondly pampney form venous plexus pampney form venous plexus are nothing but the plexus of uh, veins that are present uh, around the testicular arteries these are the pampney form venous fluxes and you also find some lymphatic vessels here these are the lymph vessels lymph vessels and uh, this is the genital branch genital branch of genitofemoral nerve genitofemoral nerve and finally coming this is the ductus deferens ductus deferens artery to the uh, ductus deferens artery to the ductus deferens and um, this is the cremastic vessel genital branch of genitofemoral nerve and this is the processus vaginalis process vi vaginalis is an expansion of the peritoneal cavity expansion of the peritoneal cavity and uh, these are the lymph vessels you find this is a testicular artery these are the pampneiform venous fluxes and now coming to the uh, what do you say this uh, surrounding fascia this is the external spermatic fascia outside present external spermatic fascia formed by the upper neurosis of the external oblique muscle this is the intern i'm sorry cremastric fascia this will be having loops of skeletal muscles that are connected by the areolar tissue areolar tissue and uh, this is the internal uh, spermatic fascia uh, internal spermatic fascia is formed by the um, what do you say this fascia transversalis fascia transversalis uh, now okay now let us see what are the coverings of the spermatic cord testis and the scrotum see this uh, this is how the entire structure looks like the inguinal canal spermatic cord the uh, testis and entire scrotum uh, from the outside let me come in a sequence like order so this is veno parietal peritoneum this is the inferior uh, uh, what is it that inferior epigastric artery and uh, this is the extra peritoneal tissue this is a deep inguinal uh, deep inguinal canal um transverse abdominus muscle internal oblique aponeurosis external oblique aponeurosis we told in uh, external oblique now uh, how does it finally become external spermatic fascia this internal oblique this internal oblique will be becoming like the cremastic fascia and this uh, fascia transversalis will be becoming the internal spermatic fascia internal spermatic fascia so this is the superficial inguinal ring this is a deep inguinal ring uh, so i have explained you all the entire structure of this uh, so that it could be easier for you and now coming to the covering of the testis this uh, testis, uh, this is the testis, uh, this is covered uh, from inside to the outside, tunica vasculosa, tunica albuginia and tunica vaginalis, tunica vasculosa, tunica albuginia and tunica vaginalis, V-A-V, -V. so if you can remember like that and this uh, tunica vaginalis will be having the uh, inner 
visceral layer and the outer parietal layer now coverings of the scrotum scrotum coverings comes like um, uh, internal spermatic fascia uh, cremastic fascia and muscle and external spermatic fascia dartos muscle and finally the skin finally the skin so these are the structures covering the uh, scrotum like this now what are the structures covering the spermatic cord this parietal all the uh, layers covering the scrotum including the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis are the structures covering the spermatic cord are the structures covering the spermatic cord okay guys this is all about the inguinal canal uh, its uh, introduction boundaries contents and the detailed information about the spermatic cord hope you like my video if you do really